This is anisometropia and anisoconia treatment. The ultimate problem with anisometropia and anisoconia is magnification differences between the two eyes preventing the images to be formed in the brain and combined. Magnification can be calculated by a power factor, which is 1 divided by 1 minus the dioptric value of power of the lens and the, times the vertex distance in meters. If we were going to look from a minus 10 to a plus 5 range of prescriptions, this results in about a 1 to 1.5% 1 change in image size for every diopter changed. It's also important to note that when the vertex distance is zero, there is effectively no change in the magnification one way or the other. And this is why contact lenses are oftentimes used for a lot of anisometropic situations. But that's also true for IOLs as well as for refractive surgery, as they have zero or near zero vertex distance. The real problems for most patients occur when there's more than two diopters of anisometropia. This will often cause them to be symptomatic. And that, that threshold, we're reaching about 3% image difference between the two eyes, and no longer can the brain combine those two images once they get to that different of a size. Treating the situation is rarely needed then if there's less than a 2% difference between the two eyes. This is usually around the 1.5 to 2 diopter range of anisometropia. We have some other options, though, to treat the patients if they do get above that 2 to 3%. Contact lenses, glasses only. We can also use glasses only and change the, the Rx or reduce one eye's prescription to actually create, uh, minimize anisometropia. We can use combinations of contact lenses and glasses or intraocular lens implants. Usually when we talk about this stuff, we think of the difference between the anisometropia may be due to either axial or refractive causes. Axial anisometropia is purely due to differences in axial length. Refractive anisometropia, however, purely refers to differences due to changes in the power of the cornea and or the lens. This ultimately creates a decision paradigm when we know that the problem is purely axial versus purely refractive. If we're going to compare the image sizes based upon this table compared to emetropia, axial myopia and hyperopia uncorrected have larger and smaller images. And they'd also, with contact lenses, have larger and smaller images. So this would induce anisoconia and when it's axial and we correct with contact lens. However, with axial problems in spectacles, they are relatively equal magnifications, so it's no longer a problem. Conversely, when the anisometropia is largely refractive in nature, the image size is relatively equal both in contact lenses and uncorrected. However, it's different in spectacle planes. And so in that situation, we'd consider using more, more contact lenses. And that's ultimately the criteria that we use if we can make sure that the actual anisometropia is either axial or refractive in nature. Again, for axial problems, you will correct with spectacles. In refractive problems, correct with contact lens. And this is ultimately due to Knapp's law. Knapp's law is when images, image magnification is purely axial in length, there's a fixed relationship between the object size and the retinal size. That's because the retina has been stretched and elongated. And so in an axial situation, when you use a spectacle prescription, it maintains a constant size between the object and the retinal size. And that you can see here in these images from research done here at Indiana University. However, though, we can't usually predict or perfectly separate axial versus refractive in most situations as the source of the pure source of the anisometropia. One of the things we think of most in this situation is the vertex distance and magnification. Increased vertex distances increases the magnification in plus lenses and increases the minification in minus lenses. Decreasing the vertex distance decreases both the magnification and the minification of plus and minus lenses. Due to this decrease in overall magnification, contact lenses are oftentimes the first choice to deal with symptomatic anisometropia. Contact lenses work quite simply. Here we have a, a person's normal cornea on the left, and we placed a one diop minus one diopter contact lens. Just like from your optics course, when we put that minus one contact lens on the eye, we flatten the overall first surface of the eye. That doesn't mean flatten the cornea, but that means change the optics of that first surface that 
catches light by one diopter. And this ultimately changes the curvature by a diopter if you measured over that contact lens. To further hit home that point, here's an image where we've taken a baseline on somebody's cornea and then we've looked at contact lens powers from minus one to minus five. And what you can see is that for every diopter of prescription, it ultimately flattens that first surface of the eye, the overpower of that eye by that amount. You also might notice this red zone here, that's the optical zone. The optical zones and contacts decrease with higher powers and contacts. That's one of the reasons why contact lenses and cataract surgery are a good way to treat anisometropia. Here's an example of anisometropia following cataract surgery. What we can see is they can tolerate a lot more anisometropia without symptoms. This is using a, what's called a visual function questionnaire, where the lower the number, the worse the patient perceives their vision. However, there's still some people around that two diopter group that are symptomatic. Ultimately, if contact lenses don't remove any of the anisoconia or anisometropia, the next treatment method is through isoconic spectacles or modifying the spectacle to correct the magnification dif differences. And that can be done in a various methods with this table here, where you may need to alter individual components of their glasses prescription to minimize the difference between the two eyes. Here's one example of how people have done that in the past from clinical and experimental optometry. The standard spectacle lens, this person has two diopters of anisometropia, resulting in about three to four percent difference between the images. Ultimately, this can be modified if we alter either the, the vertex distance, the index of refraction, the thickness of the lens, or the base curve power of the lens. In this situation here, they've increased the index of refraction, they've changed the center thickness, and then they've also altered the base curve. Having done all these things, we've now, they've now reduced the overall magnification to only 0.69% and allow these lenses to be wearable for that patient. We typically save this for the last ditch situation as it's relatively complex and oftentimes is not cosmetically appealing to the patient. Thank you. The end.